Hello, welcome to the new National Geothermal Data Repository, commonly known as NGDS. This presentation is primarily meant to serve as a report to stakeholders on the current state of NGDS, but is also meant to serve as a limited tutorial on how to use some of its latest features. Our latest round of upgrades focus on improving four aspects of the NGDS system. This included stabilizing the harvesting of metadata records from NGDS partners, updating the front end interface of the NGDS web pages, improving security and performance, and adding simple metadata mapping and editing functions that do not require a software engineering background to use. Let's begin by explaining what NGDS is and how it works. NGDS is a meta catalog that tells you where you can find geologic maps, text reports, field data, photos, and other resources for geothermal research. What do I mean by a meta catalog? Think of it like this. Imagine that you have several libraries. Each individual library maintains its own collection of books and its own metadata catalog that describes each book and where it can be found in that library. A meta catalog is simply the aggregation of each individual library's catalog into a single master catalog so that you can search for a particular book across all libraries at once. The only difference between this analogy and NGDS is that instead of libraries, the NGDS metadata catalog is aggregating its records from 11 major online geothermal data repositories, such as the Geothermal Resource Council's Geothermal Library, the Department of Energy's Geothermal Data Repository, and the US Geoscience Information Network. Although combining each data repository's catalogs into a single master catalog may sound simple, there is one major obstacle that has to be overcome. Each data repository in the NGDS network is an independent entity that sets its own data publication standards and procedures and is free to describe its collections using any metadata schema that it chooses. Therefore, in order for NGDS to know even the simplest facts about an item, such as its author, it needs to know how that particular data partner describes authors. Does it call authors the creator, the responsible party, the originator, or by some other name? In order to handle these translation problems from one metadata schema to another, the original version of NGDS, NGDS 1.0, created a series of intermediate translation or harvesting services. This service would know that creator should be interpreted to mean author, and owner should be interpreted as publisher, etc., and would relay that translated information to NGDS so that it could be displayed in a uniform manner. While this may sound like an elegant solution to the problem, these harvesting services suffered from four major drawbacks that significantly hurt the operation of NGDS 1.0. The first major drawback is that the harvesting systems existed completely independently of the main NGDS database, and each had its own server and unique code bases. This meant that if a harvest failed in some way, there would be no way of knowing that it had failed just by looking at the primary NGDS system. Instead, each harvesting service had to be examined separately, which dramatically increased the maintenance footprint for NGDS 1.0. Second, Rather than having a single master translation system, multiple repository-specific harvesting systems were set up. This meant that each harvesting system had its own unique quirks, which made the maintenance process even more complex and expensive. Third, and perhaps most importantly, these harvesting systems were not intelligent or reactive in any way, and were nothing more than a hard-coded set of rules and instructions for translating from one metadata schema to another. This meant that if there was even a slight deviation in the input metadata schema from what the translation script expected, that metadata record would fail to be displayed in NGDS, and in some cases, the entire harvest system might stall and cease sending any new records to NGDS until maintenance was performed. 
In some cases, this would lead for NGDS to be days, weeks, or even months out of date. Fourth, these harvesting systems lacked any kind of user-friendly front-end interface for editing or updating the translation rules. This meant that maintenance had to be performed by an experienced software engineer that was familiar with each harvesting system's code base. Therefore, a major goal of the NGDS 2.0 system was to eliminate all of these independent harvesting services and their associated drawbacks. NGDS 2.0 is instead a single unified system that handles all aspects of creating the meta catalog, including the metadata harvesting, translation, and validation processes. This means that there is only a single system that now has to be maintained. Furthermore, Unlike the old harvesting process that would stall if it encountered a never-before-seen metadata schema, the new system will always accept a metadata record, so long as it is a valid XML or JSON file. Instead of rejecting non-compliant records, NGDS will now notify the maintenance staff that a new metadata schema has been encountered and needs to be translated. Furthermore, we have adopted a simple user-friendly spreadsheet-based system for translating across metadata schemas. Whenever NGDS detects a metadata schema that it has never encountered before, it assigns it an ID and notifies NGDS staff that a translation is needed. This translation is configured simply by stating in one column what NGDS would like to call a metadata field. In this highlighted example, NGDS wants to call it title. And in a second column, we simply need to record what the original metadata schema called it, in this case, identification info.citation.title. This change was a major pillar of the NGDS 2.0 upgrade for two reasons. First, we no longer need a software engineer to maintain the harvesting process. Such a simple spreadsheet-based interface can be handled by someone with minimal training. Second, because our system no longer rejects invalid or unfamiliar metadata schemas and will always add new items to the database, we can easily inventory the current set of successfully translated metadata and unsuccessfully translated metadata. As of the current project date 811, we have successfully translated all encountered metadata schema types and are harvesting 100% of available items currently provided by our data partners. Our improvements to the harvesting system indirectly led us to improve the NGDS front-end experience. Because our new database structure completely changed how a web page would interact with the NGDS catalog. Here is a list of some major improvements that arose from this change. First, we have added a lot of functionality to the search page map. In NGDS 1.0, you were only able to draw a bounty box to search for a geographic area. Now, you can still search using a bounty box, but you can also see the geographic locations of records as you hover over them, and you can actually click on the record to investigate it further. Second, a new feature we have added that is quite convenient if you have a lot of records that you want to search for is the ability to pin or save a record for later study. Third, if you, are, if you already know that a particular record is the one you are looking for and you just want to go directly to the data, you can click directly on the link from our search page and be directed to what you are looking for. If there is more than one data type within a record, we now provide a handy drop-down menu that allows you to pick the item you're looking for. Last, we've now added, added metadata tracking <coughs> that lets you know when a version has been edited and allows you to look at what the record used to look like before it was edited. We'll talk more about metadata editing functions later in this presentation because it was another major pillar of the 2.0 upgrade. The third major pillar of NGDS 2.0 was changes to improve the security of the system. This was prompted by a hack of the NGDS system in 2017 that brought the entire system down for several days. The full list of security improvements are detailed in a separate text report, 
but the most important security improvement was updating our software to more modern versions. While this may sound trivial, using versions of, of modern <coughs> versions of software is vitally important for maintaining good security practices. For example, we upgraded the NGDS database from using PostgreSQL 9.1 to 12. Version 9.1 stopped receiving security updates in 2016. This means that the dozens of exploits and vulnerabilities in PostgreSQL that have been found and fixed over the past four years were not fixed or even fixable in NGDS 1.0, which left us vulnerable. The last and final pillar of the NGDS 2.0 update was to develop a series of user-friendly metadata editing forms that could be used with minimal training. In particular, we sought to develop and test a form for the meta translation, metadata translation process. In other words, the spreadsheet-based system for metadata translation that we discussed earlier. Because this approach turned out to be so successful, we ended up mapping all available metadata schemas and harvesting all valid metadata records, leaving us nothing to test. However, we also made two other metadata editing forms that we would like to showcase. Let's take a look. First, we have added a very simple single item metadata editing form. This, is, this did not exist at all in NGDS 1.0. In order to use this form, a user must log in, click on the item of interest, and then click edit. This brings up a series of little edit icons on the left that allow you to edit the abstract. <laughs> title, author, or other fields. Second, and more importantly, we have added a bulk editing form or batch editing form. This is a particularly useful form for any errors that occur across multiple metadata records. Here, we identified 294 items that were formerly located on the HTTP services.azgs.az.gov Esri ArcGIS server. That server was running Esri ArcGIS server 10.2, which is significantly out of date and insecure. To correct this, most files on that server were moved to a more secure and modern system at the domain https gisdata.geothermaldata.org. However, the metadata records in NGDS still direct users to the old domain, meaning that it would be impossible to find where the data actually is now. Manually finding and editing 294 items would take a long time, but our batch editor allows us to fix all 294 records at once in a simple and safe environment. We hope that this presentation has given you an overview of our recent changes to NGDS. You can look forward to NGDS 2.0 going live on 9-11-2020. Thank you.